The ITU World Triathlon Series has just one more race for the 2018 season, the Grand Final. And this year, the athletes have head out to the Gold Coast in Australia. In fact, where it all started, the first ever World Triathlon Series Grand Final took place in the Gold Coast back in 2009. And this year, the results could go a number of different ways. So to help me out, I've brought in some serious brain power, Luke Watson. Thanks for joining me today, Luke. Thanks for having me, Mark. Now, Luke is the Welsh Triathlon Performance Coach based at the National Performance Centre in Cardiff. And I think it's fair to say Luke knows the ITU series inside out, but he has promised to be unbiased in his analysis of the athletes. So here are our top triathletes to watch out for at the ITU World Triathlon Series Grand Final. Well, this weekend, there's going to be over 5,000 athletes competing on the Gold Coast, both elite and age group. But the racing that we're going to be focusing on today is with the elite male and the elite female. Now, it is wide open as to how the results could end up, but actually who gets crowned the world champion isn't necessarily who crosses the line first. Essentially, there are two titles available for the men and two titles available for the women this weekend. The first one is the WTS Grand Final winner, which is awarded to the first athlete across the line, male and female races. But the main event is the overall world champion for 2018. And that's awarded to the athlete with the highest point score calculated across the whole season. So each athlete's best five events up to this point, plus their score from the Grand Final this weekend, is their total score and the athlete with the highest score is the winner. Okay, so let's start on the elite women's side. So Luke, how are the rankings looking on that side? Well, interestingly this year, we could actually crown a world champion who hasn't won one of the individual series events. USA's Katie Zafiris is the current series leader, um, and that's thanks to her incredible consistency through the year. So she's had two second place finishes and three third place finishes, and that's left her 34 points ahead of Great Britain's Vicky Holland. So how has Vicky's results this season compared to Katie's? Well, I think it's fair to say that Vicky is the in-form athlete on the circuit at the moment. She's won three of the last four races in Leeds, Edmonton and Montreal, um, but she's actually carrying an 11th place finish in Hamburg after a bike crash as one of her scoring events. Well, could anyone else actually win the world title? Well, essentially due to the way that the points are allocated, it looks like a straight shootout between Katie and Vicky, with whoever finishing ahead on the day taking the world title. That's as long as they're both in the first 15. If they're outside the first 15, then Vicky actually has to beat Katie by two places in order to overhaul her. Okay, this is getting complicated now. Um, given their consistency this year, I'd say it's unlikely, but if both of them were to slip up, there's a couple more athletes waiting in the wings. Right, so has anything like that actually happened before, where the sort of two top people have fallen outside of the top 15 or something? Yes, yeah, it's not unheard of. Like, it's a, there was a similar situation in 2013 with the grand final in London, although the points gaps weren't quite as big there. You had uh, Gwen Jorgensen from USA and Anne Haug from Germany were ahead. Um, however, Gwen had a bike crash and Anne Haug had a really poor swim, which took her out of the race effectively. Um, Great Britain's non Stanford ended up dominating that race and she took the world title. Right, so who is that athlete that could potentially come through and take that title? Well, the third place ranked athlete is George Taylor Brown, and she's been a bit of a breakthrough athlete in 2018. She's had three World Series uh, podium finishes in Leeds, Edmonton, and Montreal. Now, you say breakthrough, I actually remember Georgia from a few years back where she put in some incredible performances, both in triathlon and in running, but unfortunately she got injured, um, but seems to be on her comeback trail now. And like you've said before, she's around a thousand points down. Maybe it's gonna to be a tough ass for her to actually get that title, but she could be a threat on the day. Now, who else? is in contention for that podium. The overall series rankings are very close. Like mathematically, anyone down to Yuka Sato in 14th is in contention for that third spot overall. And uh, fourth place, Jess Learmonth, and seventh place, Kirsten Casper, are only separated by about 150 points. So that's worth about four to five places on the day on the weekend. It's really close. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty close. Um, George is in pole position. She's got about a 200 point lead, but there are a number of other athletes in contention, including Rachel Rachel Klammer and Jodie Simpson. So Klammer was the uh, winner of the first race this season in Abu Dhabi, if you remember that race. Yep, it was a bit of a, it's like a Mario Kart <laughs> course, wasn't it? Crashes left, right and centre. Yeah, it was. So she's a really strong all-round athlete um, and she'll be on a high because she just got engaged to her partner, Richard Murray, who I'm sure we're going to talk about later. Absolutely. Um, anyone else? 
in contention? Yeah, there's um, Jodie Stimson. She's, uh, she hasn't actually been on a podium since uh, the first race of last season in Abu Dhabi, but her results so far this year have gone eighth, seventh, sixth, fifth. So I wouldn't bet against her stepping up again. Definitely coming yeah. into form just in time then. Yeah. Okay, so let's now move on to talk a little bit more about the race dynamics. And it is a bit of a two-sided story here because we've got who is here, who isn't here. And it's partly why we've held off on talking about a fourth place ranked athlete. Yeah, so fourth ranked is Jess Learmont from Great Britain. She's undoubtedly the fastest female swimmer in the sport at the moment. She's led out the water more times in WTS than anybody else. Um, and she's been quite instrumental in forcing some of those splits and breaks, like the ones that we saw in the races in Leeds and Montreal earlier in the season. And she's obviously an athlete who's more than capable of finishing up on the podium herself, uh, as she did in Stockholm World Series last year. And in the 2017 Grand Final in Rotterdam. And actually, some of those athletes that she, we quite often see her in those breaks with are also racing. We've got like Sophie Coldwell, Katie okay. Sapiris also yeah. can join there. But one person that is missing that she is often joined with in those breaks is Flora Duffy. Yeah, so uh, Flora's been quite a dominant force since she uh, won the Grand Final in 2016. She's won quite a lot of World Series uh, races from the front and from the break. She won on this course in Gold Coast in the Commonwealth Games in April, uh, but she's out for the rest of the season with a uh, foot injury. Yeah, well, that is a real shame. And I think for a lot of us, the race dynamics that she brings was quite exciting. So it's gonna be a real shame losing that. But now let's talk more about some of those other athletes that perhaps bring a bit of pedigree to the race. They're, they're maybe the wild cards, the outsiders. Yeah, so we've got three more athletes to talk about, I think. So Andrea Hewitt was the winner of the 2017 Gold Coast World Series event. She's been one of the most consistent athletes on the circuit for the last 10 years. Her form's been a little bit indifferent this year, but you can never count someone with her pedigree out. Um, the second one I wanted to look at was probably Joe Brown from Canada. So she was a medalist in the Commonwealth Games, again on this course yeah, phenomenal in April. Performance. Um, again, her form's been up and down through the rest of the year, but she finished fourth in Montreal in front of her home crowd. So it, it, that was the last race of the series. So she seems like she's back on form. And then the last one really is uh, Ashley Gentle. So she'll be the home, the home crowd favorite. Uh, she was second in the Gold Coast event last year. She missed out on the medal, individual medal in the Commonwealth Games, which I know she was disappointed about, but she then produced a really strong relay leg, which helped the Australian team to take the victory. I'm sure she'll have a massive like, home crowd behind her. Okay, well now let's take a look at the elite men's race and number one ranked athlete, Mario Mola. I've got to be honest, that world title looks quite secure for him because he is just shy of a thousand points clear of the second place ranked athlete. This year, he's had well, a fourth place of Bermuda, it's not bad. But going from there, he's also had four first place and two second place finishes. Yeah, Mola actually only needs a 14th place finish to guarantee the world title, regardless of what anybody else does on the day. And he was the winner of the 2017 Gold Coast event. Yeah, and I think it's fair to say as well that to beat him, you've got to have quite a good advantage or gap on the bike. Well, yeah, you do, but even then, sometimes it's not enough. So as you saw in the last uh, World Series event in Montreal, Christian Blumenfeld and a couple of other athletes came off the bike with about a minute's lead, and Mola caught them with a K to go. Yeah, the guy can run. Well, now let's take a look at the second place ranked athlete, and this guy, well, he's quite a talent coming through. He is Jacob Burtwood, so he plays second at the Commonwealth Games. He's got three WTS podiums this year, and he's another guy that can run. He's only 23 years old and he's really not afraid to take some big scalps. Yeah, he's got, I'd say he's got a really good chance. He just has to remember how many laps he's going to do. If you remember, I think it was Edmonton 2017 when he went for a sprint finish uh, ahead of Richard Murray and then realised he actually had another mile to go. That's a bit of an error, isn't it? Right, we're now third place ranked athlete. French athlete Vincent Louis, he actually won the grand final race in Rotterdam last year, but not the overall WTS series standings. He is actually a phenomenal runner. I mean, he's trying to qualify for both the triathlon and the 5K for France for the 2020 Olympics. So he's yet another athlete we should probably watch out for on the run. Yeah, indeed. What about the South Africans? 
Ooh, well, that one is interesting because we've got Richard Murray and Henry Schuman. Now, Richard Murray is placed fourth in the rankings at the moment, and he's had a, I guess, a somewhat turbulent year. Didn't start out quite so well, but then he has come through a win in the WTS Leeds event. And then, I don't know, he does seem to be coming into form, so again, he's probably another athlete we should look out for. Henry Schuman, on the other hand, almost flipped reverse. He's had a very good start to the season. He won in Abu Dhabi, and then he also won the Commonwealth Games. Since then, he seems to have gone almost downhill a little bit, but he is another athlete that could really influence the race, particularly with the swim. Yeah, I think it's also interesting to note that there's only a 90 point gap between Richard Murray and Vincent Louis, so that's worth about two places in the overall standing. So it's, it's quite close in, on the men's side as well for that overall series podium. Okay, well now let's talk about the Norwegian team. Yeah, so Christian Blumenfeld's obviously been the main figure in that Norwegian team for the last few years. He's had a number of World Series podium finishes, including this year, but he's never actually hit the top step of the podium. He's currently fifth in the overall rankings, and he was second in the grand final last year in Rotterdam. But he's not the only Norwegian that we should be worrying about, because we've also got Kasper Stormers and Gustav Eden. And we all remember that fantastic race of Bermuda where they hit one, two, three on the podium. Yeah, that was the first time on the men's side that there's ever been a clean sweep of the podium and Gustav Eden actually went on to Lausanne World Cup last month and took the victory there. Uh, that's the venue for the grand final next year so yeah. he's obviously in good shape. Well that was an incredible run by him there and I think he just pipped Johnny Brownlee as well going into the final stages of the run so yeah very very interesting watching those but then there's also another couple of people we have missed out. The Brownlee brothers, Alistair and Johnny Brownlee, we actually haven't seen them racing side by side since the Commonwealth Games when questionably they maybe weren't both on form for that. Alistair, well, he just raced the Ironman 70.3 World Championships where he put in an incredible performance and given that it was just off a few weeks of run training, I think we should expect quite an impressive performance from him at the grand final. Johnny, we actually haven't seen him on the top of the podium in a WTS series race this season, but maybe having his older brother back, having that sort of duo working together, we could see them putting in a very good performance. Well now let's take a very quick overview of the course that the elite men and women are going to be undertaking. We obviously got an Olympic distance, it's going to be a 1500 meter swim, a 40 kilometer bike followed by a 10 kilometer run. And conveniently, Luke has been out to this venue already. So talk us through it a little. Yeah, so I was out there for the Commonwealth Games on pretty much the same course in April. Uh, that race was actually a sprint distance, whereas this is Olympic, but they're near enough the same, it's just double the distance. So the swim course is two laps with an Australian exit in between each lap. That can be a little bit choppy if it's windy, but it's generally quite well sheltered. The bike course is quite flat, but there's quite a number of technical features on it. I believe it's eight laps, and then on each lap you've got almost three 180 degree dead turns. So that could throw a bit of interest into the bike leg. Yeah, I think it's quite a well-balanced course. So we obviously saw in both the men's and the women's race in the Commonwealth Games that the brake did manage to stay away. And I think that's due to the, obviously it was due to the firepower in those groups, but also due to the technical nature of the course. Um, the run is a pure like speed merchants course. There's four laps straight out and back. And so I'm sure we'll see some pretty fast times. Well, you may be wondering when this is all taking place. And it actually starts on Friday. We've got the under 23 women and the under 23 men taking place on the Friday. And then on the Saturday, we've got the para triathlon followed by the junior men and the junior women. And then at 3.06 p.m. Gold Coast time, we have the elite women's race. And then on the Sunday, starts with the under 23 and the junior mixed team relay. And then again, at 3.06 p.m. Gold Coast time, we have the elite men's race. Well, I think we've been pretty thorough there, Luke, and we'd love to hear your thoughts as well. So please do drop your thoughts, your predictions in the comments section below. It's looking a little bit more clear on who might win the series overall, but who might cross that line first on the day, not quite so much. And so again, do drop your thoughts in the comment section below for that as well. If you'd like to see more videos from GTN, just click on the globe and subscribe. If you want to see a video on everything you need to know about draft legal racing, click here. Yeah, and if you'd like to see our pro tech from the ITU WTS Grand Final last year in Rotterdam, just click down here.